Hello, this is Joe Reinhardt, instructor for the CCNP Switch training series from TrainSignal, and here's a demonstration from the course. Now with the introduction of bridging, which we covered in some detail, and obviously with the growth of local area networks, a number of different devices were introduced. Hubs, which we mentioned in passing, bridges, which we discussed in some detail, and finally switches. So understand that each one of these has a different function. Hubs essentially allow extension network at layer one. It is a purely electrical device. It's a physical layer device. It doesn't do any filtering. It doesn't do any layer two inspection. It certainly doesn't do layer three inspection, and they're largely obsolete. Then there's a layer two network extension, which we discussed, and bridges, which actually allow the network to expand without creating the additional traffic problems. And then finally, layer two network segmentation, an ability to be able to divide up the network, which is switches, which we'll discuss each one of these. So layer one network extension is essentially the function of hubs. Remember, a repeater is a two-port device. A hub is a multi-port device. But essentially, all it does is regenerate electrical signals. So hubs function at layer one, essentially a multi-port repeater. It increases the collision domain. The more devices on the network, the greater amount of collisions, the greater the collision domain. And it's half duplex by nature. You cannot have a full duplex hub. It simply doesn't work. Now, if all you have is a crossover cable and you're connecting two computers or workstations together, you shouldn't have collisions at all. But that's a different, a little bit of a different animal. Now, there are many drawbacks to hubs. Obviously, to begin with, they're obsolete. There are some niche areas where they might be helpful or they might be something that you can use in a pinch if you have some problem you're trying to deal with. But essentially, they're useless. You might be able to use them to be able to, to enable sniffing of traffic using a packet analyzer, but largely you're not going to see them. Usually you're going to find them in closets with devices that have been discarded. The other drawback is it's all bandwidth is shared among devices. So if you have 10 devices on a hub, each one is going to be competing for traffic. If you have 20, you essentially have the bandwidth divided up by 20 and so forth. It increases the amount of collisions and degrades performance with each station added. Now, granted, if you add a station that's really not doing a whole lot, it's not going to make a difference. But if you put a server on the hub along with a bunch of workstations and you put another server, another server, this could just cascade almost out of control, so to speak. So these are the main reasons why hubs, though they were important in their own day and age and time, that they are no longer considered a relevant piece of equipment in networks. Bridges, which we covered in some detail. You rec probably recognize the graphic to the left already. But the characteristics of bridges, they function at layer two. They increase the broadcast domain. Notice that uh, the bridge sits in the middle. It creates two collision domains, but it still is one broadcast domain. And the reason why is if you remember flood, forward, or filter, it's going to pass on all the broadcasts. And so the broadcasts are still forwarded, so there's really no filtering of that. Bridges are half duplex by nature, but they do filter traffic by layer two address based on the table that it builds in its memory. Bridges drawbacks, again, generally obsolete. You very likely will not find them. I've been in the networking industry for some time and I've never found one in a network. I found hubs, but not bridges. It increases the amount of broadcasts. Again, it is not possible to have full duplex operation and essentially you're limited to two ports because you're going from one side to the other. Switches are very prevalent in modern networks. Granted, there are different speeds and different capabilities, but they are very common throughout networks. Characteristics of switches, they function at layer two or three. There are layer three switches that have become extremely popular. At one time, they were violently expensive, but not so much anymore. You can still get layer two switches, or you can get layer two and layer three switches. These increase the broadcast domain, because again, they're not filtering broadcasts. It does reduce the collision domain. They are full duplex capable. If you have, for instance, in the switch that's pictured to the left, let's just assume it has five ports. So each one of these workstations that's plugged into the switch can run at full duplex capability because they're the only thing on that port and collisions are not going to be possible. And obviously, like bridges, switches filter by layer two address. Now, what are drawbacks to switches? Well, they're not a whole lot of them, but very simple ones have no management capabilities. And if you're using simply a layer two switch, 
you're going to have to have a router attached to perform inter VLAN routing and other layer 3 functions. Another thing that's not listed here is obviously it increases broadcasts or it doesn't decrease broadcasts is another way to put it. So, but a very common device you're going to find in networks. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.